If you guys are watching my channel, there is a very good chance that you have been in the beauty community for so many years now. You've seen the ups, the downs, the trends cycle, brands come into the market, brands leave the market. We've seen a lot of stuff being here for so long. If you guys didn't know, I started my channel back in 2010. That means I've been doing this for 14 years. And in that time, there have been some things that have happened in the online beauty space that I cannot get out of my head. Today, we're gonna be talking about my Roman Empire beauty edition if you guys aren't on tiktok you may not be familiar with the viral trend that was your roman empire it stemmed from some girl asking her boyfriend about how often he thinks about the roman empire or something like that it there's a whole backstory as to why this is a thing on TikTok. But basically, in layman's terms, if you guys aren't familiar with what that means, it is when your brain goes to just thinking about a different time period, different trends, different topics that aren't that relevant anymore but for some reason you just can't get it out of your head they are just sitting there you are literally just thinking about it and thinking about it and i think about pretty much all of these things on a daily basis just because i felt like they were so either weird or revolutionary or just there was something odd about it at the time and i just can't get past it i can't get past it i can't get past the fact that we all lived through some of these things in the beauty industry, and it's kind of crazy. The first thing that is my Roman Empire, again, we're talking back in 2010, 2011, 2012, on YouTube, beauty YouTube specifically, everybody's go-to nude lipstick being MAC Myth. If you guys weren't around when the community was absolutely obsessed with MAC Myth, it is literally a light toned concealer in lipstick form. For some reason, every single beauty guru was obsessed with MAC Myth, and that was the nude lipstick that really kind of revolutionized or popularized the term nude lipstick overall. And let me say a few things. Obviously, back in the day, back in time, Time, there wasn't a lot of diversity when it came to beauty influencers. Most of the beauty influencers that were on the platform of YouTube specifically were lighter skin tone. That's where I kind of carved out my niche when I started making videos. There weren't hardly any tan skin beauty creators. And I know that because so many of you guys came to my channel because I have a tan skin tone, because I probably have a similar skin tone to you. But back in the day, if we were talking the biggest beauty influencers, they tended to be of a lighter skin tone and they tended to also love MAC Myth lipstick. I'm gonna be so for real with you right now. MAC still sells Myth, but in my opinion, it is a concealer color even on a lighter skin tone. I don't particularly think this lipstick looks flattering, just worn full opacity as is on any skin tone. I'm gonna just put it out there. That is definitely an unpopular opinion, but I don't think MAC Myth full force as is looks good on anyone. Now I understand, of course, you contour it a bit, you put a different lip liner on it, you're just of that right skin tone, you kind of sheer it out, you pat it in with your finger, you can make it look good. But this lipstick had such a chokehold on the beauty community. Everybody claimed you needed this lipstick. This was the nude lipstick of everybody's dreams. And there was never even an asterisk on that. I remember watching some beauty creators back in the day that would say, this is the nude that you need in your life. And it didn't, it, it wasn't like, this is a nude you need if you are X, Y, and Z skin tone. It was just universally stated that this was the nude lipstick you needed. And I bought it. I bought it because other people recommended it on YouTube. And I very quickly found out, AKA the first time I wore it, that I can't wear this lipstick. This isn't for me. This isn't my nude lipstick. So because of that, I was also inspired to do my own nude lipsticks for tan skin tone videos. Because like I said, I very quickly found out that colors are so subjective and they really, really vary according to your skin tone, your undertone, also your makeup preferences. But um, MAC Myth 
it's not obviously a tan skin tone friendly nude lipstick but i was convinced that i needed it because so many beauty influencers talked about it. Another random makeup product that does occupy a space in my brain, and I genuinely think about the marketing for this product on a daily basis. We are talking about the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. If you guys had not heard of this mascara, because I don't believe Urban Decay sells it and they haven't sold it for many years, this mascara was marketed as being sex proof. So we've seen some crazy outlandish marketing from lots of brands, including Urban Decay. We've definitely seen our fair share of sexually related or, you know, just marketing that is rooted in sexuality. I know Too Faced has a better than sex mascara. So I understand, again, apparently mascara and sex, they're... Some people think they're, you know, interchangeable, apparently. But of course, the way Urban Decay went about with this mascara was that it was so sweat-proof, humidity-proof, like it wouldn't flake, it wouldn't smudge, it wouldn't move at all, to the point where they had to take it as far as to saying it was sex-proof. For such a large brand, you have to get approval from so many different levels of people before you're able to approve and release a product and even marketing material like that. So the fact that I know, I know this marketing scheme went through at least three different layers of people, at least. And every layer was like, yup, 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 sex proof. That's the way we want to do it. Sex proof is the way. Very fascinating to me. I'm going to be real. It's so fascinating. I literally think about it on, on a daily basis. My next Roman Empire is something I look back on very, very fondly because I have a lot of really good memories trying to track down and collect the Wet n Wild limited edition collections. Do we remember this time on YouTube? So let me just paint the picture for you. This was pre Wet n Wild and basically all drugstore brands. This this was before they were selling these products online. You could not get most drugstore brands online. It wasn't a quick click and ship type thing. You had to go into physical drugstores. We're talking Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, and you had to hunt down limited edition displays, like the cardboard displays that they would have in the special sections of your drugstores. You have to hunt those limited edition displays down and you have to be lucky enough to be one of the first people to find the display in order to get everything you need. Why is that? Because those limited edition displays only had one, maybe two of each color of each product. So if you were like me, somebody who wanted to collect the full collection, either to make a video or just for my own personal satisfaction of having the collection, you literally had to go from Walgreens to Rite Aid to CVS to CVS to Walgreens to CVS to Rite Aid to Rite Aid. I did that. I did that my Myself, I remember for a lot of my college time, it was craziness. It was madness. And the reason you had to go to so many drugstores to collect everything is because even if I found one lipstick in stock at the first Rite Aid, there were four other lipsticks that I needed to find on these limited edition displays. And it would genuinely, genuinely take all day to track down some of these collections. And it was really like a scavenger hunt, honestly. I remember in one day, I want to say I hit 17 different drugstores before I was able to find the full collection of something. Nowadays, obviously, we don't have that because nobody would do that kind of drugstore hopping, especially when you can just buy the collections online. They're not that hard to track down nowadays. And I know just in general, Wet n Wild isn't as popular or as much in demand as it once was. And of course, the reason that was so was because because Wet n Wild was one of the cheapest drugstore brands. Their prices were always so affordable and their quality, especially for a drugstore brand at 
that time was impeccable. They had some of the best lipsticks, the Mega Last lipsticks. I remember going crazy for those. They were such good matte, long lasting lipsticks that were literally $2. Their Color Icon eyeshadow palettes. I mean, Wet n Wild was literally one of the only drugstore brands and maybe to this day still is one of the few drugstore brands that kills it with their eyeshadows. Those eyeshadows were buttery. They were smooth. They looked so good. Their shimmers were impeccable. The mattes were so pigmented. And back then you could not find a pigmented and blendable matte to save your life. But the fact that you could get them in these color icon palettes, it was so... It was so fun. I just have such fond memories of those products. Of course, I still have my little Wet n Wild collection that I don't use anymore just because of the age of those products, but I can't get rid of them because the memories are just so strong with that one. It was the drugstore hopping back in my day, you guys. That is still my Roman Empire. I think on the daily, like, wow. Today, I don't have anything exciting to do, but it would have been a drugstore hopping day if we were talking 10 years ago. Here's another single product that I think about on the daily and we are talking about my Clarisonic face brush. I loved my Clarisonic back in the day. This brand as a whole does not even exist anymore. Clarisonic was under the same umbrella brand as Sonicare, like the toothbrush brand, but this was their facial cleaning brush. And I was obsessed with this thing, you guys. I've made many, many videos on my channel. If you go back, you will see Clarisonic review videos. I would literally compare them to other products. I included my Clarisonic in my holy grail makeup products or like beauty products of all time. I really didn't think I could live without this face brush because this item really helped to clear up my skin, especially back in high high school and in my undergrad of college, my skin, especially my cheeks, were really, really breakout prone. I would break out all the time. And I, I don't know if it was just an age thing, if it was what I was eating or the skincare I was using. I'm not sure. It could have been a combination of everything, of course. But I specifically remember that the Clarisonic was one thing I incorporated into my everyday routine that really helped clear up my skin. It was basically a a vibrating face brush that you would just use you use it with your face wash at the end of the day and it would essentially lightly exfoliate and use those vibratic vibratic those vibrations the sonic vibrations that sonic hair is known for to help penetrate the skin layer and especially when you used it with a good face wash it would help that face wash to really penetrate into your pores and get out all of the gunk in your skin i used my sonic hair face brush up until its last leg i would constantly buy the refill brushes because you had to like change out the brush just like a toothbrush you had to replace those heads every three months or so and they weren't cheap you guys, that was not a cheap item. The Sonicare brush in general was pretty pricey. And then those replacement brush heads on top of that, they added up quick but I swore by that tool. It was like my one beauty tool that I was like, I cannot go without this. And then Sonicare went out of business. Therefore, you can't really easily access those replacement brush heads anymore. Therefore, I had to switch and pivot and I ended up pivoting to the Ferreo face brush. I still actually have it somewhere in my bathroom, but to be totally honest, I haven't used any sort of face brush or tool like that in probably close to a year now. And at this point, I haven't really noticed any differences. I think my skincare routine is just locked down and so much better. Also, I probably aged out of that kind of young teen hormonal acne thing. And yeah, I just, I haven't had to use a face brush. I haven't noticed anything different with my skin now. But if Clarisonic was still in business, I probably probably would still be using that item. I really, really loved my Clarisonic. Another Roman Empire, which I think is gonna be everybody's Roman Empire. Are you guys ready to see this picture and be like, ah yes, flashback to my past? This is the palette that put Morphe on the map. We are talking about the Morphe 35-0. I think about this palette every single day. I think about this palette every day of my life because it felt like this is one of the very few palettes in the beauty community that really made waves. 
leaves. There are maybe a handful of palettes that I can count that really, really made it on YouTube. This is definitely one of them. The other ones that I can think of off the top of my head, Modern Renaissance was another one, and the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette, that was another one. But the Morphe 35O, I think about every single day because I can't believe how obsessed we were with a palette that looks like this. Even at the time, maybe it was sort of revolutionary for the time, but the fact that this is such a clearly private labeled palette, the formulas were nothing new, they were nothing unique, they were nothing revolutionary to the market. Morphe didn't even really make this palette, tea with no tea. It wasn't anything that special. And maybe at the time it might have been special, even I made videos on it, even I loved this palette at the time. But looking back, I don't think the color scheme was that interesting, the quality wasn't that terrific. The only thing it did have going for it was the price tag. You could get 35 eyeshadow colors for, I think this retailed for $30. So there was that affordability aspect, which I understand but again just overall the waves that this palette made the amount of times this palette was sold out the fact that people were literally waiting in long 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 morphe lines outside of the burbank morphe store i was one of them i was one of the people standing in a way too long morphe line outside of the morphe burbank for this palette insane absolutely insane of course there's been a lot of morphe palettes that have been really popular even since this one most notably the morphe jaclyn hill like the white palette again another one that we all know and i think is like literally everybody's roman empire if you've been in the beauty space since this palette launched the, you think about this often. I know you do. You don't even have to tell me. I know you think about this palette often. Another one of my Roman empires, and this is probably a Roman empire to me because this is how I got my start on YouTube, and that was the limited edition MAC collections that used to come out back in the years of 2010, 2011, 2012, up to maybe about 2015 or so. I mean, those were the golden years of MAC limited edition collections. We are talking MAC Hello Kitty, MAC Barbie, MAC Venomous Villains, the original Disney collaboration. I love Venomous Villains. I did full videos on that. I still have so many products from that collection in my makeup arsenal because that was one of the biggies. That was a huge MAC collection that was so, so highly anticipated. And again, it was back when Disney wasn't collaborating with every makeup brand. It was so rare to see a Disney character on any makeup that wasn't for children. Even the MAC spring and summer collections back then, like I remember the spring color forecast collections where they would actually release new formulas, like innovative formulas for the time in these spring collections. I remember their foiled eyeshadow pigment stacks. I have so many of those. Um, the, they were just so unique and different. Their summer collections, like the At The Beach collection, that was one of my favorites. The Surf Baby collection was super cute. Even their, I wanna say, was it called Alluring Aquatic collection? It was like a metallic, aqua shade packaging with like water droplet actual like texture on the packaging so cool it was genuinely such cool packaging very well thought through collections the color schemes were amazing the formulas were new and innovative and i'm just i'm out of breath talking about it because i was so excited for those collections back then. And honestly, thinking about it now, I still do think if we had a similar idea coming out from MAC nowadays, they would still hit, okay? I know it's an unpopular opinion. I know MAC isn't quite as popular as it used to be, especially the limited edition collections. People don't tend to talk about them as much as they used to, but unpopular opinion, I think that if MAC still came out with a really good IP, a really good collaboration, and actually came out with very interesting packaging, new formulas that were actually innovative products that we haven't just seen over and over and over again and colors that fit the theme really well 
I think that we would be excited about it. I would be excited about it, okay? Because it's hitting everything I love. It's hitting nostalgia, just nostalgia from old school MAC collaboration collections. And it's hitting nostalgia depending on the IP that they collaborate with. And if all of that is combined with genuinely good quality products, color schemes that make sense, and formulas that are new and fun and different, why wouldn't it just hit? It would hit, I'm telling you. I would make a Mac haul video if they had a collection that hit all of those qualifications. And at the time, they were hitting all of those qualifications, which is why those collections would literally sell out within hours those collections would drop online and within an hour some of these products were out of stock like it was crazy the demand that these mac collections had and again it, it makes me sad because we don't see that from mac nowadays but that's not to say i'm not optimistic i think they could do it i just i don't know why they're not i don't know why they're not all of that to say I hope Mac comes back. I do hope Mac makes their big comeback because again, they were doing some amazing stuff back in the day. They were hitting the nostalgia. They were hitting the amazing formulas, the products, the packaging. Like it was all so on point. And um, I would love, I would love for them to get back to that. Definitely one of my big Roman empires. And I, again, have such fond memories from back then. Another makeup product that if you guys have been on my channel and you guys have followed my my whole just journey, especially when it comes to lip product loves over the years. This is a product I still think about on the daily and that is the Revlon Lip Butter, specifically in the shade Pink Truffle. This was my go-to lip product for so long. It was the most beautiful, creamy, slightly shiny, deliver the perfect amount of opacity, pinky nude color for a tan skin tone. Super cute packaging, especially for the drugstore, a really affordable price. The Revlon lip butters as a whole really made a splash when they came onto the scene. I think when they launched, they launched with 20 different shades, which was obscene. I mean, that was so unheard of, especially at the time for a drugstore brand to release so many different shades of a formula, but this was a killer, killer formula. It was creamy, it was shiny, it was moisturizing, it had the right amount of opacity to it, and their color scheme was so good. They had everything from pinks, reds, oranges, nudes, browns, like they had everything covered. Amazing, amazing formula. I remember doing a full review video on this formula once again, but the one that I would actually go through and repurchase, and the one that I was obsessed with was pink truffle. I still think about this product every day because I kind of miss it. I kind of miss it. I kind of wish I had pink truffle. I might have an old tube floating around my collection somewhere, but um, it's not a product I could use. That formula has been long, long discontinued, and I'm sure I could find a dupe in terms of the color and probably even the formula. Maybe that's something I need to do. Maybe I need to go back to some of my old go-to makeup products and ones that aren't available anymore and come up with dupes that you can actually buy now. Here is Shawnee's light bulb moment coming up with a video idea that I can actually follow through on. So maybe we'll do that. Either way, Pink Truffle, that's definitely one of those products that I just miss. I miss it, I miss the nostalgia of it. Again, this is when Revlon lip products specifically were at the top. The lip butters, their super lustrous lip glosses, their, uh, oh my gosh, what are those? The matte bombs and glossy bombs, they come came in like the oversized crayon style lip product. Those were super hot. I mean, Revlon really, they, they do really good lip products in general, even to this day but especially at the time they were top tier top tier at the drugstore revlon lip products and i miss those lip butters i would love for them to come back out with those that would be so fun and nostalgic if they came out with a little lip butter collection now but either way Definitely one of my Roman empires, pink truffle. Okay, I've got a couple of nail polish Roman empires because throughout my beauty journey on YouTube, I have been obsessed with nail polish over the years. And one nail polish trend, I've seen a lot of nail polish trends since I've been here on YouTube, but one that was so big that I think about on the daily and I was full force in this trend and that was the crackle 
nail polish trend. The crackle nail polish trend had such a chokehold over me. I thought it was the coolest thing. If you guys aren't familiar with the way these nail polishes work, a crackle nail polish is essentially a nail polish that you would typically apply over another like regular shade of nail polish and then you'd paint on the crackle nail polish and as it dried, the formula essentially shrunk itself and it looked like cracks. And of course, every nail came out different because the way the crackle nail polish dried would just look different. And it essentially looked like a hot mess. I'm gonna be so savage with this trend, mostly because I was so, so in it. I would collect all the crackle nail polishes. I remember when China Glaze had their crackle nail polish collection, I bought them all. OPI had their crackle nail polish collection. I think the first one came out in the Katy Perry collection, if I'm not wrong. I I literally would collect all of those. I was so full force into this crackle nail polish trend. I would wear it literally all the time. Like it was what was on my nails. If I wasn't wearing a crackle nail polish, what was I doing? So because I was a part of the community, I feel like I have full right to just rag on this trend now. It looked awful. <laughs> Anytime I think of crackle nail polish now, for some reason, I just think of a angsty teenager who bites her nails and like paints her nails once every four months so that you see the regrowth and the chipping. And it's just like, it looks sloppy. It just looks sloppy. And considering you are purposefully we're purposefully doing this trend to make our nails look sloppy, but also we're trying to still make them look clean and crisp and like the perfect crackle effect. It was like, it was putting a lot of effort into a sloppy look. It's very interesting. It's like wanting to apply makeup, but making it look like you've been wearing the makeup for a week, but the look that you're going for is like, I want this makeup to be look like I've been sleeping in it for seven days straight. And then you apply your makeup freshly like that and then go out of the house looking like that. I feel like that's what the crackle nail polish effect was giving. Of course, hindsight is 2020. That's what I think about it now. But at the time I thought I was literally the most trendy piece of shit. And I probably was because I do remember getting a lot of compliments on my crackle nail polish back in the day. So good for me. Good for me for staying on trend with that one. I don't think that if this trend comes back around, I don't think I'll be participating personally, but I could see the, you know, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, probably. I could see the Gen Alpha kids maybe getting back into the crackle polish. Okay, I feel like I've been sitting here talking for like, over an hour now. So let's wrap it up with my last Roman Empire that I genuinely needed to talk about. And that was eye mats. You guys, I think about eye mats every single day. If you guys aren't familiar with what IMATS is, it stands for the International Makeup Artist Trade Show. And makeup artists, like actual makeup artists, either aspiring makeup artists or makeup artists that are trained in makeup artistry, go to, and at IMATS, you can get, again, makeup artistry brands for a very significant discount. It's such a fun convention, you guys. I have so many IMATS videos on my channel. I would always take one of my friends and we would go to IMATS every single year and it was so fun. I mean, especially when I would go with my girlfriends, we would go and buy so much makeup and it was such a time. And especially once IMAT started getting traction in the social media sphere, so many of those OG indie brands would start showing their products at IMATS. And it was kind of a way to inspire not just makeup artists to come to this show, but people who just loved makeup and were on social media would go to this show so they could get these brands either in person or at a discount. Some of the original indie makeup brands that I remember being huge hitters at IMATS were Lime Crime, Sugar Pill, Melt Cosmetics, Naked Cosmetics. Do you remember those pigment stacks? That was a big one. Eye Candy, the glitter company, and also the other glitter company. Was it called Lit Cosmetics? Both of those companies made the most beautiful cosmetic glitters. And I just remember some of these brands, you could not get them in person. You had to either order online or go to a specialty makeup store to get some of these brands and they would show their products at IMATS and it was such an incentive to go to this convention to get these 
indie brands. And it's so, so fascinating because now I feel like a lot of indie brands are available at more mass market retailers, like even Sephora, or they're just so much easier to get online nowadays. But back then, I mean, just online shopping in general just wasn't as common. Like I said, I have IMATS vlogs on my own channel. If you wanna go back and watch them just to see what I'm talking about. I mean, it was really fun, especially if you were into the makeup industry and the makeup community it was such a fun time and just a fun cute little story to wrap up this video I remember when I was first first getting into makeup and specifically the beauty community on YouTube and I remember some of the big beauty influencers talking about iMats and talking about how they were gonna be there or to check out this brand or that brand from iMats and I didn't live too far from LA at the time and I wasn't making videos this was when I was just getting into beauty like I was just dipping my toe but I wanted to go to iMats so so badly so I asked my dad to go with me because none of my friends at the time were into beauty. I didn't have anybody to talk to about makeup in general. That's why I started my YouTube channel, FYI, because I didn't have friends in person that wanted to talk about lipstick. So I had to come on here and talk about lipstick, but I knew none of my friends would want to go with me and you had to buy tickets to go. So I didn't want to ask anybody, especially because we were still back in high school to do something like that. So I asked my dad if he would take me and my dad did come with me to my very first IMATS. He was such a trooper. He walked through the convention with me. He stopped by all the booths that I wanted to stop at. He even went to some of the panels and sat and listened to some of these, some of these makeup artists talk and some of these influencers talk at different panels. And I was so excited because I remember going to one specific panel. I think it had X Sparkage, Purse Buzz, maybe Encore, and one other person, um, but they were all big YouTubers or big beauty influencers at the time. And I was so excited to be sitting in on this panel and watching them talk in person. And I remember when we went in, they were giving us raffle tickets because they were gonna raffle some prizes off at the end. So both me and my dad got raffle tickets. And at the end, when they raffled off some OCC, Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics Lip Tars, my dad's ticket actually won. So I remember that's how I was first introduced to Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics because my dad won a bag of lip tars that he obviously gave to me and that was the first time I ever used those lip tars and RIP to OCC honestly that's another one of my Roman empires and that might be one of the stories I want to talk about in a future video on my channel because I am brainstorming another video coming up about tragedies in the beauty industry and in the makeup community and honestly obsessive compulsive cosmetics was one of in my opinion the biggest tragedies that this industry has seen and we will dive more into that in a future video. So if you guys are interested in this type of content, you guys had fun with this video, I would really, really appreciate it if you would thumbs up this video, if you would go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I have some really exciting, some nostalgic type content coming up for you guys in the future. I've definitely got some ideas up my sleeve, but if you guys have any other topics you want me to cover in the future, please leave all of your ideas in the comments down below. And just in general, I appreciate you guys being here with me. Thank you so much for your support and your love. I've been on this platform for 14 years and I don't see myself going anywhere. I am a little inconsistent from time to time, but a girl is still here. I am still here and I appreciate you guys being here with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you more than you will ever know and I will talk to you in my next video very soon. I'll see you then. Bye.